Dr Adrian Mann. I've trained as a rural GP, a graduate of the New University of Newcastle and I've been working back there now for about six years. I call Hawaii home, that's where my roots are. Um, and right now I'm a family physician, I'm a faculty member at the John A. Burns School of Medicine, um, focusing mostly in the area of cultural competency training. There's nothing that I don't love about uh, being a doctor, but one of the things that I love the most is, uh, you know, trained as a rural GP and, and, and working largely um, in Aboriginal health now and Aboriginal medical services. Um, first of all, being, a, being able to make an impact in people's lives, and you hope it's a positive impact that you're making, but connecting with people in a way that you don't connect with in any other job that I'm aware of, it's incredibly rewarding and by far outweighs any downside that they could possibly find to medicine for me. What I've loved about being a doctor is being a part of my patients' lives. That relationship that I have with patients. And I know how it feels to want to have somebody that you can rely on to help you. So it was, it was being that, that position of, of support and help. That's what I valued the most. I've always been interested in, um, in how the body works and uh, I suppose interested in health but mostly interested in people because I only went to year 10 at high school I had to do a matriculation course to get into university so I went to Newcastle University and done the Open Foundation course. So I've been studying all morning, my eyes were burning so I made myself some lunch and I went into the lounge room and I put the television on and the, uh, the Ray Martin show or the Midday show was on at the time and they had the first two um, Aboriginal doctors to graduate from the University of Newcastle on there, Lewis Peachy and Sandy Eads. And the first thing I thought, what, they're Aboriginal doctors? I couldn't believe it. And then just listened to uh, Lewis and Sandy talk, and I thought, oh, they're, they're just normal people, I could do this. Um, because in, in the wrong ways, I suppose I'd stereotyped medicine. I always thought it was for rich people and doctor's kids, and never thought that someone from my background could give it a shot. Uh, but as soon as I seen these Aboriginal doctors on the telly, I thought, this, this is where I am. So. Um, I think it was the, the following um, working day, I was straight down at the university, went to the School of Medicine, uh, got all the information, read it back to front, uh, had rehearsed in my own mind questions and answers that I might give to those, and, uh, and then the rest is history, I got into medicine and studied through Newcastle. When I was a little girl, I loved to read, and I read these books about these two incredible nurses called Florence Nightingale and Clara Barton. And they so inspired me that I decided that I wanted to be a nurse. Um, so when I was in high school, I started volunteering at the hospital. But it was actually while I was at the hospital that I got a little more interested in what the doctors were doing. I really didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. I was like, no, 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 I can't be a doctor. I'm not smart enough. And I didn't have anybody in my family that was in medicine. So I, you know, I didn't really know what it took to be a doctor. One night in my senior year, I was kind of laying in bed thinking, and I was thinking, you know, what happens if I turn 65 years old and I'm laying here in bed and going, what if? What if? And that's what inspired me to at least try for medicine, for becoming a physician. Because if I didn't make it, at least I tried. And if I didn't make it, I could still go into nursing. The challenging parts of uh, being a doctor are probably primarily time. Having enough time to do the things that I know that I want to do. Maintaining my cultural integrity in a Western biomedical model uh, can sometimes be difficult. But I think we have an obligation to do that for our patients because when we do that, it makes a big difference. And not only for our Indigenous patients, our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander patients, but when, when I apply those kinds of values to non-Indigenous people um, in the communities that I work for, everyone gets benefit from it. Sometimes I get, I get frustrated at the enormity of the challenges, but then I'm also inspired to keep going. Um, so I think my work as a physician and a med medical education, being in medical education, I've, I'm learning that it's just small and you just keep going and you keep building and it's one step at a time. And you start bringing, start collaborating, working with other people and it's like, if we get big enough, we'll make a, a change. Having done medicine um, has made me a better person. It's allowed me to be who I truly am instead of pretending. I think when I was a young fella, uh, some, in, to some extent I was full of fire and rage, 
and and that, that's not who I really was. But there's all these things that happen around you uh, in in the broader community, and you're exposed to racism all the time. And I dealt with that type of stuff often uh, with anger. Whereas I think being a doctor has allowed me to be who I who I truly am, uh, someone who I hope cares about other people. When I was young and I was going through medical school, I never thought that I would be an academic. But going into medical education sort of re-inspired me and I really get charged from working with, with students because some of them are very inspirational. So now in, that I'm in medical education, I, I feel like I, I can affect the broader population. To be in a position where you're in people's lives the way you are every day is just an amazing experience and I just, you, you can't place enough value on that. I really think there's a lot of answers in our collective Indigenous experiences that are relevant to the rest of the world.